You know, if I was in a Florida classroom right now, I would be what the cool kids consider a uh, <laughs> delinquent. <laughs> I would also be, be be fatally shot and arrested by the Florida Police Department. In that order specifically, fatally shot and then arrested. Hello everybody, Leftist Shill here. Welcome back to my new video. Hey, have you heard the recent news? Florida has officially banned gay people recently. You know, literally not allowed to exist. Wait, that doesn't sound right. Hold on. Now, why would I, a respected journalist, purposefully relate intentionally wrong, generalized, and ambiguous information to you, my audience, in order to stir up an angry and reactionary response, so that you not only agree with my political ideologies, but also increase my viewership? which by extension increases the amount of money I get from my sponsors, whilst also endangering the lives of those in the marginalized groups that I'm targeting. I wonder where I learned that from. The Parental Rights in Education Bill, or as critics call it, the Don't Say Gay Bill, was recently passed in Florida by Republican Governor Ron DeSantis. Lots of debate has been circulated around the bill in the past month, as it critically censors and limits LGBT plus discussions and course material in a K-3 setting. You know, as these issues have to be quote-unquote age-appropriate or developmentally appropriate, so says the Washington Post coverage on the bill. Which, to some of you watching, might not seem like a big deal, but in more basic terms, the bill means that any material that would mention anything related to the LGBT plus community by the teacher is banned from the classroom. This means even children's books, like this one titled Mommy, Mama, and Me, which is just the most sweetest and most wholesome thing ever, is banned from a classroom. You know, if Ron read this book, I think he'd have a stroke. Or even if a teacher in this setting just so mentions that they're in a same-sex marriage, they are liable to getting fired. The bill as it stands is an act of censorship and stating that education on these topics should not start at an early age. Now again, many might look at this bill and go, why should I care? So what? I mean, when I was in K-3, through I wasn't thinking about LGBT people, I was thinking about Tonka trucks and Barbie and my exited box. And yeah, that kind of is the point of this. I mean, what this does is this unlocks the floodgates of other states unleashing anti-education bills, preventing children of even higher grade levels to learn about the real important parts of our world. You know, the fact that an entire community of people not only exists, but are historically important. You know, for a party that always bellyaches about the left censoring them, Republicans sure are putting in a lot more actual censorship legislation into action than the left. Now, what I find to be the most interesting and sad part of this whole disaster of a circus is the media attention this bill has received, specifically on the conservative side of things. Uh, take a listen to some of the most popular conservative figureheads' opinions on the topic. When did our public schools, any schools, become what are essentially grooming centers for gender identity radicals? There's never a time when a teacher needs to when a teacher needs to sit down with kids and tell them that hey, you know, uh, you're a boy, but you might actually be a girl. Do you really want to talk to a five-year-old or a seven-year-old or an eight-year-old about their sexuality and, and gender? That's on you. You're a pervert. You're a weirdo. I don't give a damn if you're a teacher. Like maybe teach the kids to read before you tell them to go trans. 
you shouldn't be talking to kindergartners about gender identity, especially if you're not their parents. That's creepy. You should be arrested for that. Look, there's a reason why the Democrats are treating this bill like it's the apocalypse. All we're telling them is you can't groom young children. Yeah. And to them, it's Armageddon. And that's because they know they have to indoctrinate the kids into this madness very, very young. Now, geez, that's a... Uh... Whoa, uh... Let's listen to the exact words being used here. Words like indoctrinate, groom, perversion, pervert. The mere mention of LGBT plus people is something to be feared. They're an other that is trying to threaten your children's safety and future. They are dangerous. One claim that the right continues to use is fighting back against the assertion that saying and putting laws like this into place are not bigoted and homophobic, instead they are protecting children. As Doug Meyer, an assistant professor of LGBT studies in the Women, Gender, and Sexuality program at the University of Virginia stated in his book, Violence Against Queer People, hate crime discourse has helped downplay societal discrimination by associating anti-queer violence with the actions of a highly prejudiced person. The danger of this idea is that it reproduces notions that homophobic violence occurs because an individual person hates lesbian or gay men, not because social conditions are set up in a way that homosexuality is stigmatized. A more productive analysis would focus on the social structures that make anti-queer violence possible instead of viewing it as socially decontextualized, individual pathology. These ideas also define prejudice in individualistic ways. In U.S. media, discrimination is most frequently discussed as the property of individuals, with emphasis being placed on whether one person has said or done something racist, sexist, or homophobic. These discussions not only prevent analysis of more important matters concerning social inequality, but also distort the more subtle and pervasive ways that discrimination operates, where nothing hateful is said, but the act has lasting discrimination consequences. Discriminatory consequences. Discrimination frequently operates through reflexive favoritism rather than aggressive hate. So by using this incredibly coded language in relation to the LGBT plus community, it reinforces the social structures that allow anti-queer violence to occur. The basis of this is sadly rooted in this culturally forced idea that those who are a part of the LGBT plus community are inherently predatory and dangerous to your children and family. You can see this commonly throughout the 20th century as well as in stereotypes targeting gay men and trans women. I mean, there were even PSAs about the topic in the 50s and 60s. Now listen to this and see if the rhetoric sounds any bit familiar. That looks innocent enough, doesn't it? Lots of young people hitchhike. Seems like a good way to get from one place to another. But sometimes there are dangers involved that never meet the eye. Let's take the case of Jimmy Barnes. Jimmy played baseball all afternoon, and he didn't feel like walking home, so he decided to thumb a ride. Jimmy got out, the stranger gave him a friendly pat. Then he told him he'd see him again, as he always drove by the park on his way home. Then during lunch, Ralph showed him some pornographic pictures. Jimmy knew he shouldn't be interested, but, well, he was curious. What Jimmy didn't know was that Ralph was sick. A sickness that was not visible like smallpox, but no less dangerous and contagious, a sickness of the mind. You see, Ralph was a homosexual, a person who demands an intimate relationship with members of their own sex. But by now, Jimmy felt a fondness for Ralph, presents, and even gave him money. But payments were expected in return. You see, Jimmy hadn't recognized Ralph's approach soon enough. When Ralph first asked Jimmy to go fishing alone, he should have discussed it with his parents or teacher. Finally, Jimmy told his parents, and they reported it to the juvenile authorities. 
Ralph was arrested, and Jimmy was released on probation in the custody of his parents. But all homosexuals are not passive. Some resort to violence, as in the case of Mike Merrick. Public restrooms can often be a hangout for the homosexual. Bobby and his friends hadn't noticed the man who had been in the restroom when they changed, and as it was lady suggested, they take the shortcut under the pier. When Bobby recognized the stranger as the man in the restroom, the shortcut under the pier didn't seem like a good idea at all. One never knows when the homosexual is about. He may appear normal, and it may be too late when you discover he is mentally ill. So keep with your group, and don't go off alone with strangers unless you have the permission of your parent or teacher. Yeah, it makes you feel a little gross how similar it sounds, doesn't it? I think we can all collectively agree that this old PSA is wrong for the disgusting language and demonization of queer people it represents. So, why isn't what conservative media is saying now about the same group of people wrong when it's barely any different? Now, originally, I was just going to hyperanalyze the exact language and words used by these conservative figureheads, uh, but then something kind of funny happened. A certain unavoidable topic when researching the Don't Say Gay bill, a certain to Michael Mouse, if you will. So basically what happened is Disney gave $125,000 to the Republican Party of Florida and $65,000 to a committee that helps elect GOP state senators, led by the incoming state senate president Kathleen Pasadomo. All the donations, which were disclosed in a new campaign fillings, arrived as the state legislation session was getting underway in January. And when this was found out, uh, people were not exactly happy about it. So not only did Disney donate a considerably large amount of money towards Republican politicians, which would inevitably go towards the bill to be financed, they just threw up their hands and went, uh, whoops, that's awkward. Uh, actually, we don't want a, uh, the bill to be financed, even though we were for the bill. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a big whoopsie on our end. The Disney family, uh, not the current CEO, but the actual family of Walt Disney, uh, promised to donate double the amount to LGBTQ charities. Uh, but as of this recording, um, yeah, I have yet to find any reputable source uh, to show that they actually followed through with that. It's been a month. <laughs> now, I am not intentionally trying to paint conservatives in a bad light. I'm literally just telling you what's going on. I, I, I'm just entirely convinced that conservative media groups just think that their audience has like the memory of a goldfish. Because given the large amount of money donated to Republicans by Disney, you know, and also Disney's previous track record, uh, it, it all aligns with conservative ideologies and Republican values. But guess what Republicans are going insane over? <laughs> Not to bring hypocrites into the conversation again, which is near impossible not to do when talking about conservatives. But for a party that whines about cancel culture all the time, they are trying to absolutely cancel Disney right now. I mean, they even went as far as to pass a literal bill to strip Disney of their tax exemptions for their Florida park, which has done tons of financial damage. You know, like, part of me is like, yay, tax the mega corporation," But the other part of me is like, Oh, they're only taxing them because they support gay people. And mind you, the quotations around the word support are doing atlas levels of backbreaking work in the sentence. Another incredibly bizarre media response is how some conservative entertainment outlets are committing themselves to putting tons of money into making their own children's entertainment as a response to Disney's wokeness. Uh, take Ben Shapiro's network, The Daily Wire. 
its CEO, Jeremy Boring, <laughs> um, said in a statement, Americans are tired of giving their money to woke corporations who hate them, and that children's content has been in the works for months. Uh, Boring has brought people on, like, VeggieTales' Eric Branscum and Ethan Nicole to head their children's department. <laughs> I've, I've really gotta stop laughing. I'm trying really hard not to make jokes about these men, because, like, then I'm the problem. I've, I've gotta be mature. Gotta be mature. <laughs> okay, you know what? Never mind. Jeremy Boring and Eric Branscum. I can't wait for the announcement of the newly appointed heads of their PR team and social media teams. Uh, John Bad Guy and Stephen Homophobia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm done. Oh, for, for real, for real. Let, let's think about this. This is all because of and in response to Disney. Not even directly supporting LGBT causes, but apologizing for funding their anti-LGBT bill. And the response to just an apology has been the same wartime-like harmful rhetoric seen previously in history to demonize minority groups. Your family is in danger. Your kids are being threatened by indoctrination into degeneracy. The enemy is going to destroy your proud nation and everything you love. And the only way you can combat that is by standing with us and funding the projects we have put in place to combat and annihilate this perverted threat to your children. I'm, I'm not trying to deny that Disney hasn't done progressive stuff. I'm just trying to point out some of the irony in regards to... It, it, it seems like if, if you look at all of Disney's actions, like every time they do something progressive and actually good for like the LGBTQ community, for instance, it seems they do something equally or even worse on the conservative Republican side of things, like bigotry. And it, it's just this pattern. And uh, you know what? I, I think I'll just show you because it's actually quite... It... What's... What's that noise? Oh my god, Disney! doing this why are you doing this Disney why are you doing this look it's it's the first gay MCU character uh -huh. uh, isn't this is isn't this that background character in the opening of Endgame who had like one line of dialogue passively mentioning his dead husband and, and didn't that scene also get cut in most worldwide releases Fine, if that's not good enough. Here, the first lesbian couple in Disney products ever. Oh, oh wow, this is this is great, guys. This is uh, actually pretty progressive. This show's getting another season, right? Or or was the show canceled before this episode aired, uh, which led fans to believe that it was because of this episode, only for the creator to later confirm that yes, the executives were not happy with this episode airing. No. <laughs> There's so gay people in Eternals, you haven't- <laughs> <laughs> little... <laughs> Well, with all that being said, congrats on making it to the end of this video. Uh, these types of topics are hard to talk about and to acknowledge, especially if you're raised in a cultural environment that expects you to be a part of these harmful ideologies in order to be associated with them. 
Critically analyzing topics that are very close to one's own identity are hard. So becoming more educated on topics like LGBT plus issues does nothing but benefit and improve our society and make it so that these people who are just like you and me don't have to fight to justify their own existence. And by becoming more educated, what I really mean to say is SUCCESSFULLY BRAINWASH YOU TOWARDS THE LEFTIST PROPAGANDA! Yes, that's right. Do you feel it? Do you feel the liberal agenda coursing through the seams of your brain to the tune of Walk by Cardi B? Look at yourself! You already are wearing a Black Lives Matter t-shirt! Soon you will be asking people for their preferred pronouns and respecting them. You'll be acknowledging a woman's bodily autonomy by the end of the week. And most deviously of all, all of your morning coffee will have soy in it! <laughs> 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 